Well, thank you very much, Professor Toledano, for that uh, very interesting um, uh, historic... Very interesting is usually not a compliment, no, no, you know no. that. It was an ex extremely interesting historical portrayal of, of the tensions between um, history and the present and, and pragmatism and ideology and the different narratives. Um, I think it's a good background for um, the next presentation. Um, our next speaker is um, Professor Hassan Kozo Balaban. I hope I said it right. From uh, Istanbul, Sahir Shahir. Shahir. is a Shah. University. <laughs> and he's going to be speaking about Turkey and the Middle East, interests or identity. Um, Professor Kozo Balaban is a faculty member as I said, at the, at the uh, Shahir University. Uh, he previously worked in the United States at the, in the University of Utah, uh, Michigan State University, and at uh, Lake Forest College in Illinois. His research focuses on Turkish and Middle East politics, and among his publications, he has, he's written a book on Turkish foreign policy um, and co-edited the volume on religion and politics in Saudi Arabia. So we'll see how that connects. <laughs> Please. Okay. Uh, is it ready? Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, because it's not. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you very much for the invitation. It's nice, uh, great to be here uh, among uh, an extremely distinguished uh, scholarly community. Uh, I'm very pleased and appreciate you. Um, I would like to um, present today uh, about, uh, you know, some general notes about Turkish foreign policy, uh, focusing on the last uh, 10 years, asking the question whether it is the interest or identity that drives Turkish foreign policy. Uh, in the last panel as well, uh, some of the references uh, were, uh, were given to, uh, to Turkish foreign policy. Uh, so I'd like to share my ideas uh, about that, and hopefully with the question and uh, answer session, we would have some, some chance to, to talk. Um, first of all, uh, Turkish foreign policy, just like any other country, uh, is influenced by a set of variables that can be located on two, um, two different contexts. One is the ideational context uh, for Turkey, it is the Ottoman legacy. And it's not only a pragmatic use of Ottoman history, but rather to be arrested by Ottoman history. Uh, uh, and it offers opportunities as well as it limits Turkish uh, foreign policy in significant ways. Um, that's to do with the historical memory. Uh, ethnic and religious identity of the country. For example, Turkey has to speak about uh, the Urumqi uh, crisis, uh, had to speak about the Urumqi crisis two, two three years ago. Um, well, it's a distant case, but still it affects Tur Turkey because uh, you know, Uyghur people are related to Turks uh, and, uh, and, and religiously and ethnically. Uh, and Kurdish question is another uh, issue which uh, has arrested Turkish foreign policy in important ways uh, in the entire history of the Turkish Republic. Um, but we also have a sort, you know, set of variables that can be located in the material context, in, 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 in the material context, and that has to do with the country's population, economy, structure of its economy, uh, geography, uh, uh, where Turkey is located, uh, and military power. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm a little bit oriented theoretically. So the first uh, uh, context is what the constructivists like in terms of. Uh, uh, making reference to foreign policy, that identity really shapes Turkey. But uh, the second set of variables is where the materialist theories, such as realism and, and liberalism, may be more interested in. Uh, Turkey has a, uh, has a population of 75 million people, um, and it is a resource-poor country in terms of liquidified uh, energy resources, so that, need, that, that requires Turkey to be extremely assertive when it comes to its trade policies. So it needs to be a trading nation, just like the same way as Japan or South Korea or even China are trading nations. Turkey has to be a trading nation. Uh, that has some important foreign policy repercussions. Uh, 
uh, and that, uh, for example, you may be observing Turkish politicians, Turkish president or Turkish prime minister or foreign minister with a, a plane uh, full of, you know, tradesmen going to different countries on trade missions. Uh, so foreign policy is strongly tied in, you know, to, uh, to trade policy of, of Turkey, the desire to expand markets. Uh, its geography was uh, especially significant during the Cold War. It has declined uh, in, in terms of its importance, but nevertheless, it is still key uh, in the area in terms of connecting Asia and, and Europe, uh, but more importantly for Russia to access uh, you know, traditional Russian dilemma about the entrance to warm seas uh, also concerns Turkey because of the heavy uh, stress that it puts on the on the straits. Uh, you know, the uh, oil tankers, etc., et are passing through the straits, um, and Turkey desires to be an energy hub, and so it needs to uh, or it wants to reassert its geographic significance in terms of being an energy hub with projects such as Baku Jehan. Uh, and, and a recent uh, uh, gas pipeline deal between Azerbaijan uh, and Turkey that would carry Azeri oil and gas resources to the European markets. And its military power um, is uh, the NATO's uh, second largest uh, size, si in terms of size, second largest uh, military, uh, uh, somewhat, I would say, weak on terms, in terms of its own innovative technology. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, significant projects are being undertaken in terms of uh, in terms of that as well. Uh, all uh, all of this put together, uh, I would say, you know, going back into countries' domestic, you know, identity structure, domestic identity map. So uh, this comes from my own research and book later later on emerging into a book. Uh, on Turkish foreign policy. Turk, all of Turkish identities, I believe, can be located on this map in some way. Uh, Turkish identities are influenced by two set of questions. The dilemma between Islamism and secularism, or the discourse between Islamism and secularism, and liberalism and nationalism. So the vertical line, I understand, in terms of economic uh, you know, policies or economic ideology. And liberals are the ones who wants to make Turkey a global player, and the nationals are the ones who wants to control the economy in, term, in, in the state hands and, and uh, limit countries' access to the global marketplace. Um, so all of this put together, uh, there's a type on, 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 on the uh, Islamic liberalism. So Islamic liberals are the ones who are Islamic in terms of their uh, own commitment to Islam, but as well as they want the country to be a, an important global player. Uh, so on the, other, on, on the uh, other hand, we have the seculars liberals. They are seculars in terms of their lifestyle, but they also want Turkey to be an important global player. Um, and on the southern, I would say, uh, end of that, uh, we have two groups of uh, ideologies, Islamic nationalists and secular nationalists. I, I would put the Kemalist ideology here in the secularist national side, uh, and they, uh, and especially in its in terms of its recent uh, evolution of that ideology, uh, or, uh, or more ethnic nationalism, because our own nationalism was not necessarily to be interpreted in terms of ethnicity, but rather cultural uh, interpretation. But more um, recent interpretation of that secularist nationalism uh, is more Ulusalcılık rather than Milliyetçilik. Uh, so Ulusalcı nationalism is represented institutionally, I would say, still by the military because of military's, uh, you know, course textbooks are still not touched by the government. So, uh, you know, government cannot interfere into the, you know, curriculum design of the military school textbooks. Um, but uh, surprisingly, they also share with the Islamic nationalists that will be the old school Milli Görüş movement and they are, they are, they are very weak because of the reasons that Professor Barkey explained, the country is hungry for markets. So, I mean, the, especially the conservative uh, center of Turkey uh, is full of businessmen who, who are looking for expansion of markets. So they want a political movement or political party in power who understands market dynamism rather than makes the country small in terms of its, its viewpoints, uh, in terms of its uh, 
economic policies. So uh, as of recently, actually, there is a and, and combination of these two uh, forces, uh, you know, their their common denominator is uh, is milli uh, or or small uh, small Turkey. You know, let Turkey be small, but let it be mine. Kind of understanding uh, is, I think, is the key driving, uh, you know, segment of or part of their identity. Um, if you put this in terms of party affiliations, uh, liberal globalism or liberal uh, Islamism, uh, I mean, liberal global side, uh, we have this uh, combination with Islamism, then we, it becomes Islamic liberalism, and the combination with secularism, it becomes secularist liberalism. We have the AKP here located as a globalist assertive you know, political party, uh, but very much strongly influenced by its Islamic uh, tendencies. Uh, but it doesn't make the party necessarily pro-Islamic more uh, than pro-markets. Uh, you know, I think their markets uh, orientation is, is very strong. And we, you know, jokingly in Turkey we say the old the mujahids become mutahids, you know, they're, they're con contractors. So they, they are not anymore jihadis, they are contractors. Uh, you know, they want to build uh, places, uh, houses, uh, housing complexes, not only in Turkey, but also more importantly outside, especially Russia. You know, so Turkish contractors are gaining uh, an important market segment in, in portion in, in, in Russia. Uh, all of these, of course, transforms their viewpoint, their ideology in, in important ways. And uh, I put these uh, uh, other parties as well. Uh, so AKP distinguishes itself uh, from the milligarish tradition or, uh, you know, welfare party uh, and later on the Saadet party tradition and wants to put itself as a continuation of uh, the Democrat party, Mendres, and uh, motherland party of Özal line. So there's more, so it's, it, I think it tilts closer uh, to the secularist liberalism rather than closer to Islamic nationalism in important ways. Um, and if I want to focus on the last uh, 10 years of the AKP uh, foreign policy, uh, the party came to power, therefore I think we are here for the 10th, it was actually November, so it is a very good timing. Uh, uh, of 2002 uh, and stayed in power until 2007 in the, its first uh, you know, initial years. Uh, the first prime minister was Abdullah Gül, later it, uh, uh, Tayyip Erdogan became the prime minister. And uh, during this uh, time, the party adopted a policy of, uh, of close relationship with the European Union, it embarked upon the very I think keen uh, assertive implementation of uh, the, the, the required membership criteria uh, for the European Union, and it was an adaptation stage. The party labeled itself as a conservative democratic party rather than, you know, with Islamic background, etc. Uh, but later on, if between 2007 and 2011, that's the second government of AKP, uh, we see then more assertiveness in terms of its relationship with the Middle East. And here, uh, you know, uh, uh, my focus starts. And so what they did in, during this time is, is a very active player in terms of a mediative diploma, mediation diplomacy. Uh, so zero problem foreign policy was coined during this time. So Turkey can actually play a mediator role between Israel and Syria, or between Iran and the United States and the West in, at large. So. Um, this was, I think, a genuine interest of this, uh, this government, so it improved relationship with, with Iran and Syria during this time, but then the tension emerged in terms of relations with Israel. Um, and uh, with that tension and also, uh, uh, I think, an important uh, uh, you know, point can be made about uh, the Turkish, Bra Brazilian, uh, and Iranian initiative to deal with the Iran's nuclear crisis that distanced Turkey somewhat from the Western uh, style or Western principle of foreign policy or Western uh, orientation of foreign policy. And during this time, the opposition in Turkey, especially the CHP, accused the government of change of orbit. You, know, you are changing orbit, you are making the country closer to Iran and Syria. Uh, the same circles would say just the opposite, you know, for the third uh, era, for the third uh, term. But just to note that the CHP was actually using extremely 
uh, pro-Western kind of discourse during this time, and you know, charging the government of change of orbit in, in foreign policy. And in the third um, the term of foreign policy that starts with the 2011 election, uh, the third election, and by the way, the AKP, maybe to, to its credit, is the only party in Turkish history which has increased its votes, uh, you know, election after election in three consecutive terms. It is not the first party to come to to have come to power for three consecutive terms. It's the Democrat Party first, but the Democrat Party's votes uh, in the 1950s decreased, uh, especially in the third election. Here you see a party which is increasing its votes election after election, and I think that has to do with the economic performance of the party. Uh, but the 2011 is an interesting year because that's the start of uh, that's the start of the Arab Spring, and here I, I think that an idea came to the mind of policymakers that we can actually make use of this uh, Arab Spring to create a region or help create a region which is based on the Turkish model. You know that's that's the an Islam, pro-Islamic party with liberal and globalist outlook in power, you know, close relationship with the United States and, and, and Europe. Europe. Um, and, uh, and this uh, will be a new Middle East. You know, that, that, was, that was the reason why zero problem foreign policy was put aside. You know, so, uh, and yes, Turkey has 10 different problems with its neighbors, but that's, I think that's because Turkey wanted to become an assertive player rather than a mediating player. So it wanted to write the rules of its own game rather than play the game of you know written, whose rules were written by 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 some other powers so when you you want to become a player on its own, on your own then you enter into problems with everybody you know in the region especially with iran so and uh, three neighbors of Turkey, you know, are Iran, Syria, and Iraq. That Turkey have serious problems. I don't. Think, I don't think Turkey has serious problems with Greece at this time. Greeks are busy with their economic problems. Uh, so, but the problem with Syria, the problem with Iraq, are deeply related to Turkey's deep historically rooted tension with Iran. And I think also that the Turkish crisis with Israel is also rooted in its tension with, its, with Iran. In this way, that Turkey wanted to steal the Arab public opinion on, into its own side. You know, uh, so, and the only guarantee to do that was to, you know, uh, in a way, uh, risk the relationship with Israel. You know, that was, I mean, that, that could be done in a more discourse, discursive way, but the Mavi Marmara or the flotilla incident was something that the government did not either plan well or could not imagine that it would escalate into such a crisis. So, uh, but one minute was, I think, a carefully uh, you know, orchestrated uh, and controlled tension. And if that remained in state in that level, I think that would just satisfy the Turkish needs to, uh, to uh, you know, enter into the Arab you know, hearts and minds, you know, if you, if you will. So, but that's, that's very crucial for Turkey, for the reasons that I tried to explain, you know, marketplace, uh, the size of the Arab market, and, and, and also the tension uh, between Turkey and Iran is much more strongly and historically rooted than Turkish-Israeli, you know, tension. Uh, and I would cut here because I, I know that I started to enter into my dangerous time zone. So, and uh, so, uh, I, and that's what I think is to be sufficient for the time being. Thank you.